But then Carol and I said, you know what, our kids are preteens or, or just in their early teens. What if we were to do something absolutely crazy? Welcome to another episode of The Epic Family Road Trip. This will be nice to get some chickadees back. There's nothing like the sound in early spring of chickadees. We always get the one, the odd uh, blue jay. Just birds in general are just super cozy. When we have uh, our water running again. I'll wash all these out after the season. The sap is flowing really well, um, a lot better than last year. I guess it's because we're getting really cold nights and then quite warm during the day. So perfect conditions for collecting sap. Hopefully we can get a bunch of buckets together and start boiling. My favorite time of the year. However, as is often the case here in Northern Ontario, old man winter wasn't quite ready to leave and we woke up the next morning to a return to winter.
It is a good one, actually. So we get questions all the time, uh, how do you stay safe as a family in remote areas, whether we're overlanding, you know, high in the mountains, or we're living off the grid on an island surrounded by ice, which uh, locks us in and doesn't allow us to easily get to town. And uh, one of the main things is um, a company called Global Rescue. So what Global Rescue is, it's not um, travel insurance, but it is uh, a service where if you get yourself into trouble like a medical problem of any kind you can hit the button and they will uh, send out the troops to come get you they have a network of doctors and paramedics and helicopters and people all over the world so no matter what country you're in you hit that alert and first of all they can communicate with you so if we're completely off the grid, we do it with our Zolio device, which is a satellite-based device. But if we do have internet access, like here on the island, at least around or in the cabin through Starlink, then we have direct communication with, with them as well. So they'll get a helicopter on the way to come pick you up and bring you to the nearest hospital. If, if you're a family doing what we're doing, living in remote areas or traveling to remote areas, if something happened, you've got someone taking care of you. We have a bucket, I think we can do. Yeah. We got two, one, one back there, I think. It's a little uh, icy here, Mark. Yeah, this one just got started. I didn't want to. So while Pete's taking the syrup back, um, I'm going to go in and cut up a whole strip loin for some steaks because it's Pete Sr.'s birthday today. So we wanted to make something really special for him because he's a cool guy. Because <laughs> I like him a lot. Yeah, so we're going to go get those steaks cut up and uh, enjoy the day today. And what a beautiful start to the day. It's really nice to be back at the cabin.
four or five inches. Good morning, it's a brisk, cold day here at the lake. I had a wonderful birthday yesterday and thank you to everyone for your happy birthday greeting. So we had a brief a feeling of spring there for a day and then we got hit with that snow and now the temperatures are dropping and they're gonna be, it's gonna be a bit of a deep freeze, kind of a polar uh, front coming through from the north and it's gonna be very, pretty brutally cold at night. Right now it's minus five Celsius, not that bad, but uh, it gets down to minus 14 at night. Um, so it, with that in mind, we're gonna get some firewood into the cabin to prepare for that. Thankfully, uh, last fall, we put away some wood, which is very important at a place like this. If you leave, you wanna make sure everything's kind of stocked up so that when you get back in a, you know, in a situation like this, you have plenty of supply. So this is uh, one bush or a face cord of pine, and then behind it are two face cords of hardwood left over from last year and uh, some of you have asked in, in our video where we brought in the firewood already cut from down south from my brother's farm um, why we don't you know they, I, some comments were like you live in a forest why don't you just get the wood from the forest well here the answer to that is that 90 percent of the wood up here the trees up here are uh, pine and other soft woods there's a few maples uh, but they're they're healthy. They're the ones we're tapping for maple syrup right now. But in general, it's mostly softwood, which is good wood. But they call it gopher wood because you put one in the fireplace and you got to go for another because they burn so fast. So uh, bringing in hardwood helps us heat the cabin for long periods of time. So if we're coming up next winter or staying for the winter, we got to make sure we have a lot of hardwood in in storage. Last year we used eight face cords so let's get some wood in the cabin and stay warm Our snow dogs have been sitting here inside for almost 12 months now and 
We're just trying to get them going, just adding some fresh fuel. And then try to get it started. Then we can just drive out. I think we could even drive out on the ice. From around here, there's a pretty good ice all along the shore. It's at least four or five inches, which is enough, more than enough for the snow dogs. But we're mostly gonna be using them on the island just in this next cold week uh, with the last of the snow, even if it's just a dusting to kind of help carry firewood and stuff. Yeah, we'll see if that helps at all. So I'm just going to measure, drill another hole and measure the thickness of the ice. But you can hear the ice cracking and moving. It's been so cold that it may even be thicker than when I did it last week, but let's check it out. Wow. The hard ice is now... Oh, nine inches. Whew, that is cold water. So it's actually, I think it was eight or nine inches depending on where we drilled last week so nothing's changed here hey guys welcome to the cabin i thought i'd take a minute and give a bit of uh, a quick history of who we are we've gotten a lot of new followers on youtube over the last year or so and you may or may not know our story so i thought I'd give a brief history and then uh, talk about where we are, what we're planning to do, and a little bit about this uh, cabin. So, um, briefly, when I was 16, my brother was 17, we started mowing lawns in our neighborhood, and uh, we stuck to it. We worked for many, many years just mowing lawns, cutting trees, doing all kinds of uh, labor jobs, and building up a small business. And, and uh, one by one, each of my brothers joined the business, and 
we built it up to a decent sized landscape company and a great model. And then one year we thought, you know what, we can expand through franchising and create this kind of remarkable experience from coast to coast. And so we did that and I went back to school and became a certified franchise executive and learned all about the franchising business. And we began to grow throughout Canada first and and then we met, uh, formed a great partnership with a company at the time it was called the Dwyer Group. Today it's known as the Neighborly Group of Companies. And they helped us build the Ground Skies brand throughout the United States. And we grew to over 200 locations. And um, it was an incredible time. But at the same time, Carol and I, you know, our kids were growing up and they were in their pre-teens. And I was getting busier than I had ever been traveling more, doing conferences and training programs and opening franchises and just it was being pulled away so much. And Carol and I got together one day and I said, you know, I don't like how the business is taking up so much of my time and taking me away from my number one goal in life, which is to be a good father. And we've got to do something about it. And she said, well, you know, I've been putting some thought to this. What, what if we were to homeschool the kids and then we could all travel together as a family to your various conferences and uh, training programs and things like that and spend more time together. And I thought, wow, that's a great idea. And then I thought, but isn't it going to cost us like five times more than things cost us now? And she said, yes, it probably will. But we may never be rich, but we will have a lot of very rich experiences. And so we did it. And we started homeschooling the kids and traveling together. And it was just a wonderful time. And it allowed us to focus both on the business and on the family. Then in 2016, the partner that we worked with in the States called Neighborly acquired the brand and we became uh, shareholders there. And that's when Carol and I, you know, typically I was ready to move on to my next chapter in my career. But then Carol and I said, you know what, our kids are pre-teens or, or just in their early teens. What if we were to do something absolutely crazy and sell a lot of our possessions, uh, things that we had accumulated over the years, including our house, and go on an epic family road trip. And we thought, you know, we only have a short window, of five, maybe six, seven years before our kids are grown-ups and um, moving on with their next chapter of their life. And so we thought, it's now or never, let's just go. And we did it. The Epic Family Road Trip channel came out of that. We traveled for about three years filming things just kind of the best we could and not publishing. We didn't even open a channel until I think 20, late 2017, early 2018. Um, and the kids learned those skills on the way. Um, everything from how to operate cameras to editing, working with uh, products and just, it was a great education not just going around and seeing the world and meeting people from other religions and cultures and things like that but it was a great education also of entrepreneurialism and so here we are eight years later i guess and uh, the kids are grown up and we're about to embark or we're transitioning into the next chapter of our lives carol and i as empty nesters we're not quite there yet but and we're definitely not in a hurry but um as you know, or may, may or may not know, Dan has his own channel and you should check that out. It's, it's really fun to see him producing his own videos and expressing himself in his, his own creative style. And it's called Dan Van Stralen. He doesn't understand uh, what thunder is, so he thinks it's another dog barking, so then he goes nuts. And... Caroline is still doing a year of service with our church and it may extend. She's really enjoying her time 
meeting people from all over the world. She's leaving again to to Europe in a, in a few days, and she's just really enjoying her time doing that. And we're so excited for her. And we talk almost on a daily basis, but um, it's just so fun to see her growing as a person as well. And Pete Jr., as you probably know, is an accomplished cinematographer, and he's been invited as a freelance uh, videographer on all kinds of trips with XO and other projects. Most recently, and just being published now, is what is called the Africa series, and I, I'd encourage you to go check that out. It is really, really awesome. Um, and Pete was a camera op operator on that trip. So as parents, it's really fun for us to see our kids coming into their own and um, figuring things out. So we started as mostly the Epic Family Road Trip doing overland style videos. And then, but every year, except for 2021, where we stayed out on the road for two full years. Other than that, every year we'd come back to the cabin. This is our little cabin in the woods. And just for those of you who don't know, it started as just this front log area when we bought the place. And we bought this place, me and my brothers and my dad actually, way back 25, 25 years, or no, about 20 years ago, um, 2003, so 21 years ago. And um, a lot of these log cabins were on the property and we've done work s since then. And um, my brothers and I, all have families now and we still come up here. This is for all of us, the entire extended family, um, just a wonderful place to escape. And it's one of the most peaceful, restful, cozy places on the planet. And to explain a little bit about where we are, we're in Northern Ontario. We are 40 minute drive from the nearest cell service. We are completely off the grid. There's no electrical wires anywhere. In fact, to get to a place that has electricity and all that would be another 40 minute drive. Um, so it's a truly off grid cabin. It's on an island. So that pre presents um, both wonderful uh, ambiance of, of being so far away from everyone else, from society, from the hustle and bustle of normal day life. But it also presents all kinds of challenges like having to barge everything in here from the mainland. And then there's the transition between spring and, and or between fall and winter where the ice isn't fully frozen. And then exactly this time of year in March and April where the ice is melting and it's very difficult. It's impossible to get in and out. So last year when we stayed for the full year, we we're on the island without any ability to get on or off for five weeks while the ice froze thick enough where it was safe enough to get a snow machine on there. We have now been here for a week and we probably another two, three weeks before the ice melts enough that we can get a boat in the water. So that's why we're looking, uh, we're in the market for an air boat that would help bridge that gap both in the spring and the fall. We had to learn over the years how to live in the wilderness, how to live off grid. And we started simply by coming in the summer and then we started, we built an addition on the cabin so that as the kids grew up, they could each have their own rooms and things like that. We put in the infrastructure so we could spend the winter here. And that included having to get solar in place, battle board batteries. We built a shed for that so that we have a constant source of electricity. Um, in the winter, we dip into the lake as you've seen to get water and we, we uh, purify it and it's been an incredible experience. It's allowed us to toughen up and we choose this life not because it's easier. We choose this life both being on the road and living off grid at the cabin because it's harder and, and it forces us to learn new skills and to learn some old primal skills that society is uh, to in large part lost and uh, we're not anywhere near experts yet. There's so many uh, chapters yet to come. Phase two would be more learning how to live off the land and um, what the land provides here. And that's a, a huge learning curve that we're excited to get into. So I um, hope that gives you a bit of background about this place and uh, why we're here and so on. And then in terms of our channel going forward, like I said, the kids are, are, the boys have opened their own channels. Caroline may or may not. I think uh, she should because she's extremely skilled and you guys obviously have enjoyed her creativity over the years. So um, if she decides to do that, that'd be wonderful. Carol and I are moving more to the empty nest chapter of our life. And that doesn't mean we're not going to do awesome adventures together with the kids. 
In fact, we certainly will, and we certainly plan to do that. But we, we plan to be about 60-40, uh, 60% overlanding, 40% living at the cabin. And who knows, it might be 50-50. We're, we're not uh, scheduling anything. We're just living our lives. But we do love overland travel and adventure and getting to uh, really remote places in our vehicles. And so do the kids. So we envision in the future spending time here with uh, the off-grid livings and learning more skills, but also exploring wild and crazy places around the world and maybe our kids meet up with us in their own way and in their own vehicles, sharing their adventures on their own channels. So that gives you a bit of a, a background, but also a bit of a look into the future for the Epic Family Road Trip. But in the meantime, we'll, we'll see you down, down the road. road. So no sooner had we got the uh, spigots or spiles in the trees and uh, the sap started flowing, then we got this deep freeze, so everything has stopped. Um, there's nothing but ice in the bucket. It's got whatever was in there is frozen solid. So we're expecting a bit of a rise in temperatures next week. So we have about three more really cold nights. And like right now, it's, it's quite chilly. And then it warms up. So we'll be doing hopefully a maple syrup next week. laid some limbs that we cleared from one of our trails uh, on top of the water hole. It'll help it from freezing too much and we're supposed to get some more snow and it'll allow us to find it and uh, also it's a bit of a safety thing so the dog or people won't walk through it. Yesterday we had a huge uh, wind uh, storm that hit us and blew this canoe right over. Luckily it didn't crack it, because it went flying. 